Hey friend, uh, Levi here. In this video I want to do a tour of this beautiful island location where Janelle and I have been living out of our van. Um, this is a pretty special place to us and I thought it'd be fun to give you just a full look at what this is. So we've actually been stationed here already for several months and in our last video we did an update on how we came down from Alaska to here because Janelle actually now works here at this camp. And right now actually I'm doing some, some work on the van, getting it ready for some winter camping coming up. So just uh, getting some things sorted out. So I thought this tour video would be a good chance to test out this sweet new anamorphic lens for my Mavic Pro 2 2 Pro drone uh, from the folks at Moment. So you might know them from uh, this awesome little smartphone lenses, but now they're getting into the drone game and this thing is looking super slick. So all the drone footage you've been seeing so far was shot with this and uh, maybe you can jump to this timestamp right here if you want to hear some of my thoughts on this because we're going to roam around, shoot some shots with it and then uh, see what the footage looks like later but anamorphic on a drone. How cool is that? So this area uh, is actually one of my favorite areas of camp. It's the, it's the camp graveyard. It's where a lot of junk ends up and various props and things like that actually get made from material here in the junkyard. So it's kind of fun seeing old creations just left dying around and <laughs> various pieces from games in the summer like this right here. I have no idea what this laser cannon looking thing was, but uh, there's always tons of various different ideas and things that you think you could build out of stuff in that graveyard. I just love going through there. So back down behind that graveyard is where we have the van parked and uh, I'm walking out here across the main camp area. And I figure like any good tour, I should take you to the front of camp first and then we'll work down through the various pieces. Okay, that right there is the camp road, which comes down here to the gate at camp. This is the entrance. Uh, this property, I think, is 50 acres nestled in between a hillside here to our right, and then all this kind of sprawls right down onto the ocean. So I know back when this was originally built, I think 60, 50 plus years ago, they spent a lot of time looking for a piece of property like this, just where you could have basically just a ton of open acreage in the mountains, in the trees, and be right on the ocean. But as you come down the camp road here, one of the first things that you see is just this massive ropes adventure challenge course thing with zip lines and swings, and it's pretty epic. Like, come on, check out that zip line. Every year they try to build a new thing in this challenge course. So it started off very small with just a few ropes attached to different trees. But over the years it's developed into this just massive playground for kids. And uh, it's very impressive. I never went to camp as a kid, but if I did, this is definitely the kind of camp that I'd want to go to. And this thing right down here through the trees is the skate park. Check this thing out. <laughs> now I was never into skateboarding, but having this uh, skate park right here kind of makes me feel guilty that I haven't been trying to pick it up because this is, this is a really nice skate park. Okay, so this area here is like the main field area where games get played and right across there you can see the dining hall. And we started our tour back over there where we're parked and the front gate is up there. So currently I'm heading down through one of the perimeter trails here at camp. There's all these just gorgeous creeks everywhere and the trees here are just amazing.
Okay, here we are now on the other side of this main area of camp. This is the main field behind me here. This is the dining hall. And then down over here is one of my favorite aspects of this location, which is the ocean. This view here never gets old. And over here is that thing right there. That's actually a zip line tower that comes down to the ocean, which is just, <laughs> that's so cool. They, they added that after I left here originally, so I've never gotten a chance to go on it. But come on, a zip line down to the ocean? That's a little bit ridiculous. There's these little clusters of cabin villages all over. As we move into the afternoon here, a bit of a storm is uh, rolling in which has been a struggle the past couple weeks. I've had this anamorphic lens for several days now, even weeks, but it's been just raining nonstop. So today's kind of been the first day where it's broken up, and so I'm trying to get as many drone shots as I can, and right now some, some big clouds are moving in, so I'm hoping I can get some stuff here at the waterfront before, uh, before rain starts fully coming down. Getting to have our home base right next to the ocean like this just uh, really warms my heart. The only thing that could make this better if there is a if there's a surf break right out there. Unfortunately, we're on the inside coast of Vancouver Island, so there isn't any uh, surf swells coming up here. But I will say having a sailboat to use uh, does kind of make up for it just a little bit. And I've had seriously so much fun getting out on the boat. Um, I haven't really felt any pressure to include it in videos. It's kind of just been something that Janelle and I enjoy doing in our spare time. And I'm just having fun with just for me. But uh, maybe when the weather improves, I'll take you out on a little sail there. And we'll maybe make some video of an adventure we could get up to. We're going to head back up now to the main area of camp. And I've got one last thing to kind of show you. We have the Pacific Woods Lodge. This is where all the students that are doing the leadership program live. This is where Janelle mostly works out of during the day. Currently there's class going on in the basement and then there's two levels above that that are kind of like the dorm rooms. And uh, it's actually kind of a nice building. It's one of the most recent builds on the property, I think. It's about 12, maybe 15 years old. But uh, that's where I lived when I was originally working here and a student in the program back myself in 2012. A lot has happened in life since then. A lot of really good stuff. So I've now gotten a chance to actually import and edit some of the footage, the drone footage that you've been seeing throughout this video. A uh, shot with the Moment anamorphic lens for my Mavic 2 Pro. And essentially what an anamorphic lens does is it squeezes a wider image this way so it takes a wider field of view and compacts it down into a smaller frame kind of like you know those mirrors that you sometimes see at like haunted houses that make you look taller skinny or wonky or maybe short and fat uh, those bendy mirrors that's exactly what an anamorphic lens does but it takes a wider image and compresses it down to a smaller sensor and then when you go into the edit room you stretch that image back out and what that does is the combination of optically like squeezing down to a small area and then stretching that back out, that gives the image a different kind of feel than what we're used to seeing in what's traditionally called a circular lens. So the biggest advantage of using a lens like this is that it creates that anamorphic feel, a feeling that is just different than your more clinical nature of ordinary circular sharp lenses because drones aren't necessarily out of the box supposed to be artistic by nature or the artistic is up to your interpretation, but they're meant to just go out and get images as they look. So when you attach something like this, you're making an artistic decision to capture your image differently, and that has a certain feel to it. So as filmmakers, you press into all these different tools at your disposal to create a final image that has a certain quality to it that you're going after. And that's, looking at the footage from this, it's exciting for me because it has an aesthetic to it that's just different than what I'm used to seeing out of my Mavic. 
And that's pretty cool, because now when I cut to my drone footage, it's got a really pleasing, unique quality to it, which to me adds a bit of flavor and punch to the video. Uh, some of the anamorphic stuff is that barrel distortion that you may be used to, or those horizontal lens flares. The anamorphic look has sometimes been simplified down to just that widescreen cinemascope style frame. Um, and that's certainly a quality to it because when you stretch that image back out, you're ending up with a wider frame than some of your traditional uh, aspect ratios that you're used to. So in trying to replicate a cinematic feel, it's sometimes a bit of a cheat to throw on black bars to get that 235 one look or the 241 look. And that that is certainly a way to emulate it, but you're missing out on the optical quality of how basically everything in the image gets interpolates through the lenses and then to the sensor. So in the past couple of years, I've actually been uploading my videos in a two to one aspect ratio instead of 16 by nine or 16 by nine with bars or to 35 one. Uh, and the reason for this is it's a slightly wider frame than 16 by nine, but not fully committing to that cinescope look where you're losing a lot of the header and the lower because uh, experiencing that on mobile can be a little bit jarring if the whole video is shot like that, especially in the YouTube format where it's a lot of talking head walking around vlog stuff. So the two to one aspect ratio, if you output in that looks fantastic on a phone. So that's what I've been doing these days. And it looks great on some of the big flagship phones. Like I think that most of the iPhones now are coming out in that two to one aspect ratio and the Samsungs do. And so it's just ex acknowledging what most people are consuming this on and also trying to get a bit of that wider frame feel because that's kind of where I tend to lean towards. And just because you go wide does not mean it's automatically cinematic, but truthfully I do I do appreciate that wider feel of frame a little bit more than a full 16 by nine sort of look there. So all that to say, if you're gonna be using an anamorphic lens, you're still gonna get those optical differences even if you aren't doing the full cinemascope look. So you could actually scale that up to two to one and still utilize some of the aesthetic benefits of anamorphic, but not fully cropping and committing to that cinemascope style frame. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting thing here. So why would you use this? Uh, mainly for aesthetics and getting the widescreen look out of a drone. Is it worth it? Did Moment make something awesome here? I do truthfully appreciate this piece of kit from Moment. Um, I'm not gonna use it in every instance and we'll talk about usability here in a moment because there was some hiccups there. But as another tool in my toolbox, as a paintbrush for how I wanna communicate the videos that I make to the audience at home, I'm grateful to have just another way to diversify the images that I'm capturing with the drone back home to my viewers. And I think the aesthetic is uh, pretty fantastic. So the usability of this thing, if there's any downsides to be said, uh, it's in the usability. And that's no fault to Moment. I'm super glad that they basically engineered this thing to work on a flight platform that was never meant to have additional lenses. So I would way rather choose to have this as an option than not have it at all. Uh, but by the very nature of attaching an additional lens to a gimbal platform that wasn't necessarily meant to have that much additional weight, uh, there's some hiccups. So some of those mean you gotta power up the drone and then attach the lens afterwards and then do a gimbal calibration. So it just means that it takes a little bit longer to get your setup going. And the real use case here is just meant to do the slow sweeping cinematic landscape shots. And so you're not meant to be swooping around and doing fast vehicle sideways tracking shots. Like you can do some vehicle work, but doing those fast highway speed, like 60 kilometer stuff, uh, the weight on the side of the gimbal, the wind dragging on the lens, the gimbal just gets overloaded and it flops around and it kind of freaks out a little bit. So I would say if you're gonna invest in this moment lens, just acknowledge that there's some limitations with setup time and then once you get going, if it's high winds or if you wanna be flying very fast, that's not really what this is built for. But if you wanna get some of those sweeping cinematic shots like you've seen in this video, this lens is gonna work really well for that. There's, there's some kudos that need to be given to the team at Moment for making something like this because, I mean, these drones have been out for a while and no one else has tackled physical attachments like this. So I'm here for it. Like, I want them to keep going, keep doing stuff like this, keep finding ways to give us cinematic tools on stuff that's already available on the market. So let me know in the comments what you think about the image that's coming out of the drone with this anamorphic lens on it. Uh, I acknowledge in hindsight, I probably should have done some A and B comparisons. That way you can see the way the image looks right one after another. Uh, but for me, when I'm looking at that image, it does have a different quality to it. And so I would love to hear from you if you appreciate that quality 
or not. If you have any other questions about this setup, I'll try follow up in the comments down below. Um, let me know uh, what you wanna know about this little anamorphic thing. There should be links down there as well to find one of these if you'd like to purchase one. Um, that's gonna be it for this video. I'm really unsure what the rest of January and my videos this year are gonna be like, but I hope you'll be here for them. So I'll catch you in the next one. And remember, life's better when you make stuff.